Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Tushar Maniar, Head of the Department of Pediatrics at Nanavati Max Super Speciality Hospital, Mumbai. Today, I will elaborate on the importance of side history. We must remember that side history will not only help you treat the disease, but also the patient as a whole. Side history will help you decide the onset of the disease and not merely accept the onset of symptoms as reported by the parents or the patients. For example, a history of growth will tell you whether the disease is acute or chronic. How do we decide that? If the patient has faltering in weight and height, then you know even if the symptoms are noticed by the parents recently, the disease has been going on for quite some time. But suppose height has been preserved and only the weight is affected, then you can accept that the symptoms may have recent onset as it has not led to affection of the height. Whenever we look at a patient's past history, it will help us decide whether this patient has a recurrent disease, persistent disease or a progressive disease. Let me give you an example. A child with resp repeated respiratory infections, as we see nowadays with many children, if the child has been completely normal in between, even if there were multiple infections, you can be sure that this is a recurrent problem and you may be looking at allergies, for example, hyperreactive airway disease or even a case of asthma. But suppose this child with repeated respiratory infection has no normal periods in between, has a waxing and waning symptoms, along with growth faltering, along with other developmental issues, then you will think about a progressive disease, for example, a cystic fibrosis. Also, if you have details of the past history, it will help you choose or find a pattern amongst diseases which have similar mechanism. So for example, a child with hyperreactive airway again, if there is a history of atopic dermatitis, then you are more likely to face persistence and even resulting later on into asthma. And if you have a child who has a recent history of sore throat, but now comes with breathlessness after a period of time, you may want to look at a rheumatic fever. And there are certain conditions like acute glomerulonephritis, pneumonia and GPA, which all share similar pathophysiological mechanisms. Next, we look at the importance of diet. Diet history tells you whether the affection is because of less consumption or due to some catabolic state where though the consumption is adequate, the utilization is either the demand is more or utilization is poor. By this we can make out whether you are dealing with a protein energy malnutrition or if there is a catabolic state then whether it's a congenital heart disease or a thyrotoxicosis or we are dealing with malabsorption where though there is a diet consumption there is not adequate weight gain. Very important to note the change in the pattern in diet. If somebody has recent onset loss of appetite then again you are thinking in terms of a new onset disease. But a change in diet over the last many days or months would pro probably point towards a chronic disorder. When you look at dietary history, it's important to notice any dietary restrictions that are faced by the family or parents. Now if there are for example strict vegans, then you know that certain deficiencies like B12 and folic acid are likely to be there, especially the B12 deficiency. Also if they are consuming certain things, like for example if they are having goat's milk, then you know that it can have certain substances which, is, which will interfere with B12 metabolism and again one can land up with B12 deficiencies. If you have a patient who is purely is strictly vegetarian, when you make a prescription, it is important to note that the medication or supplements that you give are of vegetarian origin and no non-vegetarian content is included in them. Family history is given utmost important importance because it can have genetic implications. And we will devote a second episode only on what is the importance of genetic history. 
So I won't get into details of that. But not only genetic, when we take family history, there are pointers like lifestyle diseases, for example, obesity, which may run in the family, or there could be habits like somebody is having, somebody is a smoker in the family that could lead to passive smoking and allergies and asthmas in children. Also, it's important to notice absence of certain family history. For example, if you have a child with headache and there is no family history of migraine, then be very careful or even migraine variants, be very careful before labeling that headache as a migraine headache. Also, family history details will give you ideas about psychosomatic conditions, neglect and other stressors which may affect the child. Family history does not necessarily mean only family. It also extends to household contacts, meaning there can be house help, there could be neighbors who are frequently spending time over here or if the child is spending time in a daycare center and that would give you clues towards common viral exanthems, even helping you make a diagnosis in early stage. For example, somebody comes with a vesicular regions in the day one or day two when you are not sure whether this looks like chicken pox. If there is a history that there is another child or a young adult with, his, with chicken pox, then you can be sure that you are dealing with, a, with chicken pox. Adolescent and adults also need to report or we need to inquire about their habits, addictions and even menstrual history. Because certain simple conditions like cyclical headaches, maybe even cyclical vomiting, if they have association with menstrual periods, you could easily make a diagnosis of hormonal migraine or menstrual migraine. Let us not forget sleep in our side history. Sleep is very important. Lack of sleep or change in the sleep pattern will point towards inflammatory conditions in the body. Not only that, a change in the sleep pattern will also guide you towards certain anxiety disorders, depression, etc. in young adults. It will also help you differentiate between stress headaches and migraine headaches. In a puzzling case of PUO, many diagnostic clinchers will often come only from history. A battery of tests will not help. For example, history of travel. If you have a child with PUO who has had history of recent trekking in the forest, then you would start thinking in terms of rickettsia. Or if somebody has recently visited an area which is endemic for Kala Azar, now comes with plenomegaly and high fever, then you might consider Kala Azar as an alternative diagnosis. Also take history of pets in the house. Pets nowadays are of variety of types. So if you have a dog or a cat, then allergic disorders can be on the rise. If there are birds like parakeets in the house, chances that one has acquired psittacosis from there. Also, it's important to ask for history of consumption of certain food items or exposure to animals. And that may help us make a diagnosis of conditions like brucellosis or other zoonotic disorders. Lastly, you must understand the importance of socioeconomic history that we all always insist. Socioeconomic history tells us the limitations and empowerment of that family in order to access health care. That means if the patient is staying in a far flung area, your treatment modality may be different. You may give a larger dose of vitamin D or you may give some injectables and cover the patient rather than giving a something which will require repeated follow ups. If the patient has limited resources, you will direct the family to social service or government institutes in order to get support to treat them. Finally, to solve the jigsaw of the diagnosis, we must have all the small pieces to complete the full picture. And these, these things you will only get from the side history. So make sure that you take complete and each and every expects, including immunization and development, which we have not touched this time which we will cover in subsequent topics. If you like this video, please click on the subscribe button. And in the next episode, we will discuss what is a genetic history and the importance of the same.
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग